Welcome to the <clears throat> Dr. John Shaw Holistic Health Show. We have a very interesting topic today. It's going to be called the silent killer, heart diseases. The statistics say that 613,000 people in the United States die of a heart attack since 19, 2008. One of every four Americans have symptoms of heart attack diseases. One half of these deaths are women. Every 34 seconds in the United States, someone dies from a heart attack. Each minute, someone in the U.S. dies from a heart attack related event. For Asian Americans, heart disease is second to cancer. So let's talk about what the high risk that causes um, can, um, heart diseases. The first thing is everybody always go to the doctor for a blood test and they come out with high cholesterol. So they think that heart attacks, the major cause of heart attacks can be from cholesterol. And the next thing they would think that when they go ahead and get an exam, and they can take it themselves every morning, is high blood pressure. That, did you know that 75% of all diabetes two um, people that have diabetes die from heart diseases? Cigarette smoking contributes to heart attacks. Overweight and obesity, poor diet, and physical inactivity, and finally, alcohol uses. So let's define what are the factors that create heart attacks. Hypertension. When people talk about hypertension, they think they got stress. But stress comes from many different sources. If you think that stress only comes from mental or emotional, then you think that that could be a contribution to heart attacks. You're absolutely right. Also, there's a spiritual component to that. Some people have turmoil with their belief system in, in a higher being. A lot of times they have what we call spiritual kind of stress. But the most common things that you and I can relate to are physical types of uh, risk factors. And we talk about diet, and we talk about cholesterol, and the fatty foods, and the fast foods, and all these. But that's just one part of what can cause heart attacks. So let's talk about hypertension. One peop most people think that hypertension is strictly from um, stress. And stress, as I told you, can be from many different sources. But the, the result, net result is the big arteries that come out of your heart or, or enters your heart. The big artery, namely the aorta, and the one that returns from the kidney, bringing blood back from the liver, is the inferior vena cava. And those are the things that can cause hypertension. And hypertension can be from aorta or large artery stiffness. Another thing it could be is called arterial pulse wave reflection. And that's how the blood comes into the vessels and they're monitoring it. And you can see if there's a steady blood flow or, or the resistance of the blood flowing into the different vessels. So most people die from not the heart attack. That's really a misnomer. They have a problem basically with the vessels. The vessels getting stiff. The vessels that bring in blood, and the vessels that export blood out from the heart. The heart is just generally a muscle that pumps, but it's affected by pressure from the blood coming in and the blood going out. Okay. So we want to have a real clear def differentiation between understanding what is related to hypertension. So a lot of people think that hypertension is 
synonymous with heart failures. That's not true. It's linked to that, but it's not, and it's synonymous to that, but it's, it's linked to that, but it's not synonymous to uh, high blood pressure and the cardio output. So hypertension is different. So we have to really focus in on hypertension. And you know that the causes of hypertension and also high blood pressure is not totally known. It's many factors. It's not one factor. And we're going to go more about that today. We're going to be talking more about that today. So let's talk about what happens to another, what happens with another factor that's involved. And that's the cardiovascular disease associated with cardio output, how much blood comes out of the heart. And when that happens, when you have a high cardio output, that is, that you're prone to infections and sepsis, these infections. And a decrease in cardio output, which is the volume of blood coming out of the heart, which is reduced, can cause cardio myopathy and cardiomyopathy means has to do myo means muscle pathology cardio is heart heart muscle pathology and heart failures so the decrease of output is really important as well as the increase so you have to differentiate between the two and so what are the signs of heart problems we're going to refer to this diagram here and it's going to show you. This diagram shows that you can get signs of the heart attack from many factors. One is you can detect lightheadedness can cause signs of heart attack. And on this area here called arms, back, jaw, neck, between the shoulders, pain, discomfort, and numbness. That's between the arms, back, jaw, neck, and between the shoulders. In the chest area, you can have pain, pressure, fullness, or squeezing less than more than a few minutes, or comes and goes. The skin can be cold and sweaty. The lungs can be, you have trouble breathing, shortness of breath. The stomach, you can have an upset stomach, and you have an urge to throw up. The other signs, in addition, some women may feel very tired, sometimes for days or weeks, before a heart attack occurs. Women may also have heart burns, a cough, heart flutters, or lose their appetite. So all these are signs of heart attacks. So let's go over to the area of what we call stressors that can cause heart attacks. And we'll bring this ring up here. And you can see stresses right here. Okay. So these stresses can be, we'll zoom them in. Okay. And it can be what we call oxidative stress. Oxidative stress can be from MDA or a <clears throat> super di uh, dismutase, a glutathione reductose, or high oxidative, or plus high cholesterols, and those combination can cause oxysteroid, which are heart attack potentials, or we call it high oxidative, plus high electrolytes can cause C-reactive proteins or distorted proteins in your body. So that's one of them, set of factors. The other factors can be water retention. Okay, so we put water retention here, you can see here, all right, and water retention, and it can be with high electrolytes, too much um, electrolytes in your system, probably dehydration, and you're getting sluggish, slug, slugging, sluggishness in your blood platelets, high aldosterone, so you have problems with water retention. Okay, high ADH, that's anti-diuretic hormones, so control water from, from uh, being expelled from your body. High renin, 
that's the kidney can make that, and the, that can cause high blood pressure. Intracellular water, and what's intracellular water? It's the water in the cells, and you have too much water fluid in the cells, then the cells can get distorted, and you don't have a good electrical potential for cells, so cells get sluggish. And also, you can get extracellular water, and extracellular water can be water outside the cell. Uh, they call that into the interstitial fluids, into the, the space uh, between the cell wall and the um, cells of the organs. And that's called connective tissue. You can have too much fluid in there. And you can have edema, which is fluid. And if you look at your legs a lot of times, you can see swelling there and smoothness of the skin, not real defined anatomy on your uh, uh, physical structure. And that can be caused, that can cause, that's water retention problem, and that can cause heart diseases. The hormonal system, interesting enough, you have the hypothyroid. The hypothyroid is related to low thyroid, okay? Low thyroid in the case of um, the um, threes and fours, okay. Um, low DHEA, okay. That's important because you can see that with especially for anti-aging. And so especially women have that. And they can create um, fat around the belly if the DHEA is off. Low adrenals, low energy. Um, uh, stress uh, glands. The glands are low in adrenal uh, adrenaline and uh, the, um, the adrenal glands will respond to short-term stresses. Leptin, which is fat, can create problems with the heart. High cortisol, and that can cause heart plaque. But cortisol is very interesting because the body secretes uh, cortisol at 7 o'clock in the morning to prepare you for the stresses of the day, long-term stresses, over five, five minutes you're overstressed and then the cortisol kicks in. But the cortisol in excess can create uh, excess sugar and affects the um, pancreas and the insulin and you can't control the glucose in the body and that builds up fat storage and also stress. And people have a hard time sleeping at night. All those are problems that contributing problems for heart diseases. And ACTH, okay, and that's usually found in the brain, and that forms the cortisol in the adrenal gland, okay. So immunity system, okay, right here is immunity system. And immunity system can be in a form of thymus gland. So the acid-base balance. If your pH is too acidic, okay, your blood pH is too acidic, you can get also contributions to the heart disease. And you can also have carbon dioxide problems where you have excess of carbon dioxide, and that can cause more acidic in the system, slows down the digestive tract, and contributes to heart diseases. And also the carbon dioxide. So one is bicarbonates. Um, the bicarbonates comes from the pancreas and it secretes in there to, to buffer out the acid in the stomach and if you got too much acidic acid in the system, you can cause heart diseases. The other part is lipid, which is fat balance. Cholesterol is the number one, people call the no, number one killer, but it's not really because we're going to show you what is the number one killer or one number one thing that causes the um, heart attacks, okay, uh, and heart diseases. Really. Liver and gallbladder. Liver, as you know, is the filtering system in the system and also produces cholesterol, which sends that um, cholesterol through the bloodstream to the heart. And the gallbladder helps to break down fat in, in terms of bile. The triglycerides, uh, can cause that problems and triglycerides is very interesting because the triglycerides is formed is covered by a layer of fat 
when it gets into the blood uh, into the blood vessels and with that if it sheds off the fat those triglycerides are just like um, raw glass glass chips and it will actually cut uh, and scrape in the, the, the uh, vessel wall and then when the blood goes in and the cholesterol gets in there it can accumulate in those those areas uh, of the uh, cuts in the blood vessels. Glucose again is blood sugar and that can cause insulin resistance okay and insulin resistance merely that the you don't have enough um, uh, insulin to to control blood sugar and the body cannot recognize the insulin to, to break it down. So you get organs now that's weak kidneys and weak kidneys can also dis causes um, some problems with high blood pressure. Um, brain neurotransmitters in the brain they call called catecholamines and do dopamines. Those are found in the brain and those are responsible for stresses that you may experience. Then there's a cardiovascular analysis. Then you have to check your systolic and that's the, um, the um, when you're going to take a blood pressure and you're active and the resting phase is diastolic uh, blood pressure. So the blood pressure should be less than um, 130. Actually, ideally, you should be in the neighborhood of one, less than 120 on the systolic and less than 80 or it can be about 75 on a diastolic blood pressure. Uh, cerebral blood pressure, when you go ahead and uh, monitor the pressure in your neck you, and going to the head, you can check that out in terms of how much pressure you're getting in those common carotid arteries. And some people see a little bulge on, just before they're called the sternocleidomastoid muscles on the side of the neck. Just in front of that is the artery that goes through the brain. And some people feel pain, pressure, or um, you can see in a mirror that it's kind of enlarged. And usually it's on the right side is acute and the left side is more chronic, more long-term. Then you can see renin, again, that has to do with how much secretions that uh, comes out of the kidney, that can control the blood pressure. Then you have F atherosclerosis, which is the hardening of the blood vessels, and ischemia is the amount of blood flowing into the tissues of the brain uh, <clears throat> and the heart. Um, blood flow viscosity, if the blood is clumped together, places are clumped together, you have a thickness and a lot of times you have what we call um, the electrolytes are clumped together because they're not hydrated or they don't have water and the person dehydrated and that can cause platelets to stick and uh, the physician usually would recommend baby aspirin to thin it out. Um, heart conductivity indicator, very, very important because that's the electrical potential of the cells and that basically can, if with low potential, cell potential, the cells will start to get sluggish and all this eventually will uh, die and then the uh, organs doesn't work as efficiently as it's supposed to because you lose electric conductivity not on the organs also but in the brain and you're going to see uh, a lot of times high potassium and that can cause constriction and also what we call the vagal syndrome or the uh, parasympathetic system activity when you see high uh, parasympathetic activity you're going to find basically that person has a precursor for heart problems. So those are the kind of stressors that can cause heart attacks. So as you can see, there are many, many different types. A lot of factors can create heart uh, diseases. So which one is it? Is there a myth? The myth says that if I pick one of them or I pick a several of the factors and I go ahead and take a supplement or I get probably a bypass surgery, okay? And you see, that's gonna take care of it. The key is finding the cause, but there's, they, they name about 17 different causes, which I'll go over in my next program. 17 causes leading to cardiovascular problems. Now, which of the 17 are you gonna be 
targeting that. Which of the 17 are you going to get the right supplement? Because there's many, many supplements on the market that people take, whether it's drugs, whether it's a natural supplement, that can do to cover one factor of it. Now, the idea basically is how do you find it? So you do a complete blood test. That kind of gives you a clue, okay? It gives you a clue, and they match it up with a drug. But is the drug really doing its work? Because the drug will only control and manage. But what about the cause? That's the key. And if you're looking at the whole body as a rule, you're gonna, you cannot factor on only one factor because other factors are contributing to that main factor that you may see as a symptom. Okay. So you have to get sophisticated kind of instrumentation. And we, we use certain sophisticated um, monitoring device. They call monitoring or scanning device. And try to ask your doctor if you have those monitoring, monitoring devices. That's FDA approved. Oh. But it does basically, it can tell you the early signs before the symptoms actually are felt by the patient. When you feel the symptoms, it doesn't mean that it's in your head if you don't find it in a blood test. Because if you find it in the blood test, you already got the problem. It's a pathology. It's almost related to a disease. It's called. So you want to find the early symptoms. And so if you go ahead and understand what are the stresses that can cause heart diseases and find a scanning device or that can actually find out which one of it are, and then which supplement? Now, I'll give you an example. If you're talking about natural supplement, there's many, many on the market that say you can go reduce uh, high blood pressure, they can reduce cholesterol, and reduce triglycerides. But you have to be really discerning because those supplements have what we call proprietary bands. So what differentiates from one type of supplements from another? If you look at the proprietary blends, they're different from one company to another. Each one has its own formulas. And some of the formulas will take care of a multitude of uh, problems that you may have related to heart diseases. But some might not have. And now, it's for you to find out from, so read that label, look up all the dim ingredients, and see if those ingredients will engage in all the different factors that can lead up to your heart problem, heart disease, okay? That's one, and that takes a little homework to do, okay? Then look at the drugs and see what side effects you may have from the drugs and what is the expectation of the drugs. Is the drugs there to monitor? Are the drugs there to reduce the, the symptoms? And does it affect the cause? Does it get the cause? If you can find the cause, you can reduce the symptoms and take less supplements, or less drugs. Okay? If you have a side effects, what is the long range uh, effect from those side effects? Will it also affect other organs? Or will it also affect your mental, emotional um, crises in terms of that, if you have crises in that, in that re in regard? So it's very specific as to how you approach taking care of your cardiovascular problems or even what we call preventing that. So, on the next show, I'm going to go over 17 causes of the um, heart disease problem. And I'm going to show you that the key to heart, the, uh, your heart disease, what causes the heart disease, is the one word. It's called inflammation. I didn't talk about, I didn't say it was cholesterol. I didn't say basically it was um, the kidneys or on. But I told you inflammation. And that actually is found in the blood vessels. Inflammation. And how inflammation gets started. And how acute means early stages versus long stages. And how those stages called chronic inflammation can turn into fibrosis or like a scar tissue. And once the scar tissue breaks, then you're in trouble. That's when you get a heart attack. So the body does some different steps along this way to help relieve the irritation to the heart. Okay, and we'll go more into that. So talking about atherosclerosis.
talking about uh, arteriosclerosis. So how do we fight heart attacks by being educated, by, by finding out, do your homework and look into all these factors. On the next show, I will go over that 17 daggers that can affect your heart disease. So we'll see you next on the next show and it's called um, Taking Care of the 17 Daggers to Your Heart.